Coming to you from the studios of STL TV in Forest Park, it's the best of the STL. On tonight's show, the arch rival Roller Girls, NBA skills coach and consultant Drew Hanlon. Heating things up in the kitchen, Steve's Hot Dogs on the Hill. Your entertainment for tonight, the Dance Floor Riot. And now here are your hosts. Please welcome Cassandra Walker and Melanie Streeper. Yes, it's so good to have you, Melanie. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's good to be on this side of this set. Exactly. Usually I'm on that side with the crowd. But yes, indeed. It's good You're going to do a here. great job. And um, I see you got the memo about the red. Yes, for the home team. Go Cards. Yes, go Cardinals. So excited. You know what? I, it's, it's exciting to me to watch them continue to progress, and hopefully they're going to continue go all the way. All the way. That will That's be right. wonderful. Yes. Well, you know, we're here in beautiful Forest Park, and we know you might want to be here, so next time make sure you get tickets to our live audience. It's, it's live in the sense that we're taping it right now, but... It's taped in the sense that they'll see yeah, it. I mean, right. those guys are having fun over they there. They are having a lot of fun. We've got a dog over there. I mean, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's getting serious. You're missing <laughs> it if you didn't come. And if you have Facebook, we, we're friends on Facebook, right? We now, are right? Facebook friends. Then you would have known about it because we always post on our Facebook when our next show is. Pictures. Yes, yep. absolutely. You That's stay right. in the know. Now, Twitter, we were talking about Twitter. Melon, do you tweet? I don't. I have been tweeting in over a year. That's, That's so funny. so embarrassing. <laughs> You told me you're boring, huh? I'm pretty, yeah, pretty dumb, pretty low key. Yeah, exactly. We were but I'm on YouTube as is right. STL TV, so. Absolutely. They can catch every best of the STL TV show. If you haven't seen it, you can go back on YouTube and find them all because we say you can be in St. Louis or Shanghai and find us. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no matter what. Now, also, STL Television is, is on YouTube at St. Louis TV, so you can make sure you catch all the shows that happen on STLTV.net and on YouTube. Yeah, that's right, subscribe. subscribe. Absolutely, make sure you subscribe. Well, Melanie, we're gonna have a great show tonight. You know, yes. we got some delicious hot dogs. You like hot dogs? I love hot dogs, and I'm smelling them already. Oh, they smell delicious. Yes. I can't wait to get a bite of them. They even have a veggie dog. Yes. That's gonna be a first for me. A first for me, too. I'm excited. I can't wait. Foot, I'm gonna be uh, fighting you to get to I that. I know, that's right. Get back. We have Cardinals <laughs> baseball and hot dogs. All we need is apple pie, and we're in the house. That's right. We'll dig up ice, some. With some ice cream on top. Oh, my goodness, mm -hmm. sounds so good. Mm -hmm. I bet LJ is jealous. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think LJ Reeves is in the audience right now. LJ, are you jealous of all that I good am. food? Absolutely jealous, but you know what? You got something to be jealous of, too, because I am over here with the most beautiful audience in St. Louis, Missouri. Give all of them a big round of applause. <laughs> They came out to enjoy the great show that we're going to have tonight. And if you would like to be a part of this beautiful studio audience here in Forest Park in St. Louis at the Best of the STL, just give us a call. We got tickets for you. Give us a call at 552-2970. That's 552-2970. And you can join us in the studio audience as well. Let's see what Melanie is doing over there in the den. Melanie? Thank you so much, LJ. Right now, I am being joined in the den by Victoria from St. Louis Community College yes, at yes. Uh, well, Florissant Valley. Yes. You're here to talk about your upcoming job fair. Tell us all about it. Yeah. Well, like Mel said, I'm from St. Louis Community College at Florissant Valley. Um, we have a career networking fair coming up on October 30th, which is a Tuesday. We have about 65 employers that will be joining us. Um, still getting employers to come in, but the career fair is from 
10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So we definitely want, you know, employers to come out as well as, you know, the the community. Well, tell me about some of the employers that are going to be there. You know what? We have various industries. We have employers from sales, customer service, um, hospitals, um, home health care is a big one that we see a lot. So um, just, a, just a variety. Yeah. Now, is the job fair open to the public or is this just graduates or current students at the college? Yeah. Students as well as graduates and then open to the public as well, too. So definitely want them to come out as well, too. So they can, they can come out. Um, it's, it's in our student center, okay. um, so they're more than welcome. Yes. And it's at Flow Valley, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what would someone need to bring with them if they, they want to come out? Most definitely a resume, have that already prepared. Maybe um, several, maybe? Several resumes, okay. most definitely. And I also want to emphasize it's a networking fair too. So you definitely want them, we definitely want candidates to come out, network and see what that, that employer has to offer. So full-time, part-time, as well as internship opportunities. Okay, so it's yeah. kind of just the whole range there. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well I would imagine, you know, Things are so tough right now with mm -hmm. the job market. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that you're going to have a pretty big turnout. Yes. Are you, how many people are you anticipating? Uh, you know, just looking at the students, I, I at least want to say over 100, and then we have the, the public coming, being able to come out too. So we expect a very big turnout. So i um, interested if we have employers that are looking to come out and recruit with us. Most definitely we encourage that. And what are some success stories that you've heard from the job fair? Um, you know what, this is actually our first annual, it's the first. first annual okay, for us, okay, so gotcha. yeah, that okay. will be a great, you know, great piece so to So there will be, be this time next year there will be some success Yes, stories. yes, yes. I certainly hope so. Yeah. So any tips for the, the people coming out, um, what to wear, what not to wear, what to say, what not to say, yeah. you know, it's always kind of a touchy subject. Right. Um, as far as, you know, looking for a job. Yeah, well definitely, um, young ladies, men, we definitely want you to dress professionally when you come out, um, you know, young men, suits, ties, definitely, ladies, uh, skirts, you know, just something to be professional, you know, professional attire. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, the resumes, more than one resume to come out, and just um, a, a good attitude to come out and, you know, be prepared. So. Yeah, bring your good attitude yes. and bring your smile for sure. Yes. Well, Victoria Harris, thank you so much for yeah. joining us, and thank best you, of luck with your first, Do which I'm that. sure would be the first of many to come, and there it is on our yeah. screen. If you'd like more information on that, you can go to their website. It's stlcc.edu. Yes. Cassandra, let's send it over to you. Thank you so much, Melanie. I am over here in the kitchen with Philip Pitkin and Steve from Steve's Hot Dogs on the Hill. I'm in the best place, I'm telling you. This, oh, it's wonderful over here. Thank you, thank you. Now, Steve, I have to ask you, Steve's Hot Dogs on the Hill, do you only serve hot dogs? No, we serve a lot more than hot dogs. In fact, we have a vegetarian dog, mm -hmm. which I'm gonna make a little bit for you right uh, yes. today. We have an Italian pit beef sandwich, which wow. takes about six days to make, actually. Really? It, um, it marinades for f five days, and it smokes for a day, and it, and it oh gets my grilled. Goodness. So we slice that up with tzatziki, and mm. we have eight different types of sausage as well. You take your meat seriously. We take it very seriously. Absolutely. Now, why did you choose your location? I love the hill because um, it's known for great sandwiches, great food, mm -hmm. and it's a great neighborhood. So, And people come down there, and... You know, they know they're coming down there to eat, and the yes. neighborhood really supports that. And, you know, like I said, the people stay down there, too, you know? Yes. So, uh, we, we like it a lot. So then what are your hours? Because you obviously have a lot of traffic going on. What are your hours? Mm -hmm. uh, we're open from 10 to 3, Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. And on Friday, we have a happy hour from 3 to 5, where we do half-off hot dogs. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. Saturday, we're open until 4 o'clock. Wonderful. And I see uh, that uh, Philip here is slicing and dicing, and, Phil and you're is adding the man. in. That's I'm right. telling you. That's right. You. That's right. That's right. So, what are we going to put over here? What you doing there? This, these are the items that we um, use for our veggie dog. Okay. We use um, uh, yellow squash, green uh -huh. squash. Mm. We use five spice tofu that we slice fresh and we put in the stove here. In fact, Phil cut some up for me, so I'm going to throw a little yes. bit in right now. Um, a little bit of uh, oil on that right there. Oh, my goodness. This but is not yeah. a typical hot dog stand, I'm no, telling this, you right this now. this is not. Um, we, we really go all the way out. Yes, you, know, you do. We, we hickory smoke all of our dogs and sausages. Um, we start out in the morning and we get them on the smoke and we actually put them on the grill. So, wow. Yeah. So that's what makes a difference, I think. That makes a huge difference, Oh, yeah. I, I tried a little bit of the, of the smoked sausage hot mm -hmm. dog. Oh, it was so delicious. Thank so you. So I have to ask you now, what are you going to be making today for us? Because Phil is over there working really hard. Phil's working the veggies. So, uh -huh. uh, Phil is going to make you a veggie. Okay. That's what Phil's going to do right All there. All right. We, we got and some it's not even Christmas, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got our veggies cooking up in here with the tofu and uh, 
Phil's gonna make it. I did want to say too that we serve everything um, on our fresh Italian buns that we get made yes. for us every morning uh, across the street from us. So, so these are special made buns. These are special. We're not made just gonna buns. go grab them down at the grocery store. Nope. Oh, I like yeah. that, Steve. Now, Steve, I also understand not only are you a chef. But you're a musical, talented person as well. You were with yeah. the band The Urge. Tell us a little bit about that. The Urge. I've been uh, playing music with The Urge since 1987. Mm -hmm. The band is actually back together, and right now we're working on a new album, and we have a new live DVD and a live CD that we're releasing uh, November 16th and 17th at the pageant. Excellent. Well, yeah. I mean, music, hot dog. It doesn't get yep. much better than this. Yep. I tell you, we're going to come back and talk about the Hawaii Five O dog and all the wonderful, delicious treats you can get at Steve Hot Dog on the Grill. So stay with us because after this break, we're also going to see the arch rival Roller Girls. Talk about some strength. Stay with us. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. <laughs> Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. It too. And you're gonna love our next guest because they're members of St. Louis's first and only Women's Flat Track Derby Association, certified all female, all skater owned and operated Flat Track Roller Derby League. Woo! And when they're not on the track, they remain active in the St. Louis community, regularly giving up giving back to charitable organizations and events around the St. Louis area. Absolutely. Here to tell us what we can look forward to their, to their upcoming season, please help us welcome Smarty McFly and Grave Danger. All right. Yeah. I 
love those shorts. My husband would love for me to have those. Right <laughs> those, are, those are nice. I love, yeah, loving that outfit. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I have to ask you, I'll start with you, Danger. Mm -hmm. What did you do before roller derby? Before roller derby, as mm -hmm. a hobby? Yes. I was a boxer. Really? Yes. So that boxing probably comes, on, comes in handy. Not so much anymore. <laughs> if I fight, I get thrown out. So, ah, but, I see. but the training came in handy. Okay, so which one do you prefer? Roller derby. I've been okay. doing it for seven years now. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> wow, that is. Now, this is your eighth season, right? Yes. Anything new and interesting coming up this season? You know, every season has something new and interesting. Um, roller derby is an evolving sport, ever evolving sport. This year, um, we're trying out a new house rules set. Uh, so if you're new to the sport, you won't notice any difference. If you're a returning fan, then you'll notice a few minor changes that the, our tribal roller girls are going to play by. Um, but, you know, the teams are always changing. The sport's always changing. It's always a really good time. We have a, we have a lot of rookies this season. So really? the M80s are a, a very different team um, going into this season because they just had a lot of retirements. We had a lot of new skaters that are filling those, those roles. So you, you've got a lot of rookies. What makes a girl want to get involved in something like this, like, like for me? Like, I don't know if I'd make a good roller derby person because I'm, you know. <laughs> I think the uh, the best qualities in a roller girl are you're competitive and you want to be a little bit of a rock star. You want to be, ah. you know, you want to shine in front of people, but also by doing an athletic sport. Yes, yes. So what do you think is your favorite part then about participating in roller derby? Um, I would say, I mean, it's fun. It, the playing is just so much fun, mm -hmm. but then also just uh, the friendships that you make with your teammates is mm -hmm. pretty amazing. The relationships that we build with each other and, and everything. Because we travel together a lot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so how, how does what you guys do differ from what maybe you've seen on TV maybe 10, 15 years ago? What you saw in the past was a very staged, like WWE style mm -hmm. fighting and, you know, clotheslining and things like that. That's a thing of the past. Um, it is a legitimized sport now. Anything that you see that happens on the track is absolutely real. It is still full contact, meaning that we use our bodies to block and to assist and, and to, to get out of tight situations and, and things like that. But you're not going to see the fake fighting. You're mm -hmm. not going to see the in-between where you know skaters are talking trash to each other. Uh, yeah, that I was going to ask really you happen. that with the stage. No. So then, can you explain to us the concept of it? What do you, what's the goal? Because you were saying blocking other skaters and such. Obviously, there's a goal to well, win. How do you win? Roller derby is a uh, sport that you play offense and defense at the same time. There is a position a uh, player called the jammer. They wear a star on their helmet, mm -hmm. um, and that is the player who scores points. So in a lot of sports, um, there's a lot, you use a ball to score points, mm -hmm. but with roller derby, the jammer, the person is like the ball. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the jammer scores points by passing opposing players um, while those players are trying to obviously block them with you know, full body contact. Yes. Um, and so basically it's kind of a race on skates and trying to score more points than the other team. Wow, we can see that right there on the monitor, how they're kind of getting in position. See, Melanie, you oh, can do that. Right. I don't know if I can do that. You're kind of small. <laughs> now, Danger, you were talking about no boxing, obviously. Right. Um, so what would constitute, like, maybe a foul or whatever? What, what's not allowed? Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, I can't elbow her in the <laughs> face. I can't, you know, put her in a headlock. Tripping is not um, You can't trip. You can't take somebody out of the knees. I mean, our concern, obviously, this is all a hobby for mm -hmm. us, a life-consuming hobby, but it's still a hobby, and safety is always our number one concern of our skaters. Sure. So, you know, you don't want to execute any play where you could end up injuring one of your teammates and one of your league mates, and that's that's basically what it boils down to. But I can use my shoulders, I can use my hips, mm -hmm. you know, you get in front of people and just kind of slow them down. Keep so them from moving, it. advancing. Exactly. Have you guys Understood. gotten hurt? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, twice. we both have torn our ACLs. Oh. She did hers a year, like about Two a year. Years ago. Yeah, and I just did, I tore my ACL at the end of February and uh, had surgery in April. So I oh am actually just gearing up and coming back from my injury and yes. um, have been cleared by my doctor. Good. And uh, and so the, I I was out all season because of the injury. Of so course. November tenth will be my first game back after. I would say I haven't played any games since February, so wow. it's been a long time. Well, welcome back. You're probably Thanks. anxious. Well, yes. You're chomping at the bit. I'm right? ready. What, what, yeah. what can fans expect when they when they come out to uh, to watch you? What can they expect? 
It is a very intimate setting, meaning that um, we do have seating available on the floor if you're somebody that just wants to be right up front with the action. Mm -hmm. We also have stadium seating. We are family friendly. Kids 10 and under are free. We do run a very PG show. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, friends and families that bring their kids and they can go to the craft table in the back and make signs for their favorite skaters. <laughs> um, but as far as the sport is concerned, a lot of fast action, hard hitting, you know, I always say, you know, you buy your ticket, you, need, you don't need the edge of your seat, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's a very exciting, it's a very exciting time. Full contact. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What type of protective gear do you wear? Do you have the, I guess the pads? Wear yeah. helmets. Uh, mouth guards, elbow pads, wrist guards, and knee pads. Wow. And then quad roller skates, because a lot of people <laughs> say roller blades, but no, it's quad roller skates, um, which I have more, I'm better at skating on quad roller skates than roller blades, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, what advice would you have for, maybe there's a young person right now saying, that's what I want to do, because I remember watching, I know with stage, when I was little watching Laverne and Shirley, do you remember, I don't know if you're probably too young, but they no, were. I remember that episode. Remember that, <laughs> yes. I and it looks like it was so much fun, even though it was stage and funny. Mm -hmm. But I remember thinking then, oh, I'd like to do that. I never did it. But what, there's someone watching now that's saying, hey, I'd like to do that. What advice would you have for them or for their parents to help them? Uh, definitely get a pair of roller skates. Go to your local roller rink and just start, just start rolling around. Um, mm -hmm. We do have tryouts. We you know, are always looking to take on new skaters. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just are a driven, competitive person that even if you have just the teeny tiniest bit of athletic ability really? or just the drive to get better. We have girls that have never played sports before. I played field hockey in high school, I played soccer, soccer. Mm -hmm. but we've had girls that have never played organized sports before that have come in and started playing roller derby. And really it's just a matter of, you know, we're skater owned and operated. And if you're somebody that wants to get involved and, and be really invested in, in, in the ownership of your league, mm -hmm. this is a great place for you to be. Wow. 18 and up. 18 and up. Yeah. 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 On the uh, other end, what's the oldest, I guess? Who's the oldest? Uh, um, we had people in their uh, mid to late 40s playing yes. roller derby. I mean, you know, we, it's, it's, it's a huge age range where we've had 18 year olds and we've had people, we've had grandmothers playing roller mm -hmm. derby crazily enough, but uh, you know, and it, although they don't look like grandmas, you see them and you're like, that does not look like a grandma, but she looks great. See, there's hope for us. Yeah. There is. <laughs> there's hope for us, yeah. And you also, you brought uh, another member of your team, Megalo Dominator, yes. who's in the audience. <laughs> Meg. My, my team's playing her team. What? My team will be playing her team on November 10th. Oh, so mm -hmm. Meg, so you're going to be playing her team, their team on November 10th? Yes, my so team. Tell the, me uh, what you're expecting and what your team's about. Uh, my team, we are the Smashinistas, uh -huh. and we are... We're kind of the underdogs of the league. Uh -huh. We're the only team in the league currently that hasn't won a championship. So this is our season to take it. And we're really looking forward to uh, <laughs> taking on all the teams. All right. Well, welcome and good luck to you. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. your season opener starts pretty soon, right? Yes. November 10th, it will be out at Queenie Park at the Midwest Hockey Complex. And it Great. ends... Uh, we play, local, our local season will go through March, and then starting in April, our national teams will start playing. Wonderful. Spe speaking of, some, yeah, some. speaking of your, your season opener, we brought some, you guys brought some tickets, and I'm yes. going to draw them from our little fishbowl Right, one here. of our audience members will win. Two tickets to the season opener on November 10th, and yes. that would be Denise Caldwell. Denise, Denise. Caldwell. Congratulations. Yay. Congratulations to Denise. Denise, Denise looks like she can play roller derby really yeah, well, too. I know. I was just thinking, I like maybe the brown bomber. Okay, Absolutely. I'm just saying. Absolutely. Hey, right. You know what? My favorite skater was Beyond Slay. So. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Beyond Slay. Beyond Slay. So we got to come amazing. up with some names. We do. Right? <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank it's you so pleasure. much for having us. It's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, so you so much. much. Well, now, listen, you stick around because we're going to also have some Midwest sports hockey at Queenie Park. We did talk about that already. Yeah, and, and so we just gave away those tickets. Yes. But it looks like LJ has some stuff to give away courtesy of Absolutely. Sam's. LJ? Yes, I am sitting here in the uh, audience with Victoria. Victoria, welcome. Thank you. Now, I have a trivia question for you. Okay. Now, are you paying attention? I think I was. You think you were? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Where will the arch rival Roller Girls 2012-13 season home bout take place? Ouch. Ouch. Is it Midwest Sports Hockey at Queenie Park? It is. Right. <laughs> and because you are such a fabulous player, 
of the best of the STL trivia, we have this gift card for you for $35 from our friends here at Sam's. Thank you so much for playing our trivia. All right. Now I'm going to turn because I have a new best friend in the audience. I am sitting here with Jackie Mole. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, LJ. Nice to be here. Now, you are the Senior Director of Theater, Exhibitions, Retail, and Visitor Services at the Science Center. I am, yeah. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. You got a lot of titles there. Yes. Now, you guys have something going on called First Fridays. What exactly is that? So, every first Friday of the month, the Science Center is open late. We're open until, we open at 6 o'clock, and we're open until midnight. And we have reduced ticket prices, we have free parking, and um, this month, this coming month, November 2nd, the, it's going to be Science Goes Wild. And so it features all of uh, activities around our wildlife rescue exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, the World Bird Sanctuary is going to be there, and they're going to release a rehabbed bird of prey into the park. Um, we have discounts on our movies in the Omnimax, so Born to be Wild. The director of the movie is actually going to come in and talk about the film and show some behind the scenes clips, that kind of thing. So it'll be a fun family event that um, is open for all ages. So everybody can come, yes. a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Science gone wild. Yes. Science, <laughs> Science gone, wild. gone wild. So all sorts of things that are going to be done there. And you said that this opens up at 6 and mm -hmm. you stay open until midnight. Until midnight. So we have uh, programs, the, Omni, the regular Omnimax films, hands-on activities, the planetarium shows. And then at 10 o'clock, we do a free sci-fi movie in the Omnimax. So you can stay until, you know, until midnight, until the show's over. But the, it, the movie's free. Free. Mm -hmm. Is there food? There's food. There's Pizza Hut. We do hot dogs, drinks, adult beverages. Uh -huh. and, yeah. <laughs> adult beverages, adult drinks, beverages. food, fun. So yeah, there's no fun. reason not yeah. to be at the Science Center on the first Friday. Every first Friday. Please come on out. Bring your family. It's a lot of fun. Now, if we want to know more information, what's the website? It's slsc.org. Well, I think I'm going to be at first Friday. Me and all my family and friends. All right. Let's see what Cassandra is doing over there in the kitchen. Cassandra? LJ, it is so good over here. You know what? First of all, I have a confession to make. I think I'm addicted. Woo! Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. I think I'm addicted to hot dogs, especially now Steve's hot dogs on the hill. I think I need a 12-step program, Steve, just to get off the, off the hot dog. Because I love them. I could eat a whole bunch of them. And I'm going to have a taste test right Take now. Take a little taste of and, this. This is the smoked uh, hot dog here. And while I taste this, because it's so rude to chew and, and talk, I'm going to let you talk, Steve. I want you to tell right. me. What is your favorite hot dog, and what is something that everyone should try at least once at Steve's Hot Dogs on the Grill? One of, my, uh, one of my favorite hot dogs that we do is what we call the mm. St. Louis uh, Chicago-style hot dog. Mm -hmm. So I, I know you, you said you're from Chicago. Mm -hmm. We do pretty much everything you do up there, except for, once again, our hot dogs are smoked. Mm -hmm. And we serve our hot dogs like in, in our special Italian buns yes. whatever. so yes. but it's you know it's, it's the dog it's uh it's tomato slices it's pickle slices mm -hmm. it's uh relish it's onion Yummy. celery salt peppers oh and uh yes we, we put all that on awesome. there awesome and uh, it's just got the perfect bite to it so it everybody's got to like definitely come in and try at least one once yes at least once the Chicago now why is it called the St. Louis Chicago dog and while he's doing that I want you to know that this right here is my sample see they made me a veggie dog I'm saving that for the end of the show, but I just can't resist. I have to have this when we go to break. But anyway, so why is it called the St. Louis Chicago Dog? Because, because it's not necessarily exactly how they do it in Chicago. And okay. we don't use Technicolor relish. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Instead, we use... So we use regular old-fashioned dill relish. Wonderful. We don't use... Um, it doesn't have food coloring in it. Okay, so, um, I like it. So you yeah. use healthy ingredients. We do, we do. Like, let's just get a gander right there of my veggie dog that's coming together. This is what I'm going to have, right? I I'm tempted to wrap it up and take it home just so I can tease my family. We'll see. We'll, we'll see make you that. one to go. Yes, we'll, oh, we'll, you heard we'll it. Hook you you up promise. One yes, I'm taking They'll one home. One. <laughs> I'll be having it for lunch tomorrow. So now, what is your best selling item? What um, you say? One of the best selling items we have is our Gorilla Mac and Cheese dog. Yeah, it's a, Get it's on a, out of here! What is a gorilla mac and cheese? Uh, like is... a McGilla gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember <laughs> gorilla gorilla. Okay, tell me about we, it. Uh, we take the dog, we put um, our homemade mac recipe on top of it, mm -hmm. then we put bacon on top of it, then we put French's fried onion on top oh of it. Oh my goodness, shut yeah, your mouth. So, yeah, that yeah. sounds delicious. Yes. 
So, and you know, I would never think to order something like that, or even to create it, but it sounds like a wonderful combination. Yeah, it's, you know, and a lot of times we get our ideas from customers. I was gonna ask you and, that. And uh, this one was, a uh, customer came in, you know, when I was growing up, I had uh, hot dogs and my macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Makes and sense. so we, we took that a, a concept and, you know, we kind of took it to the next level. But Wonderful. You know, yeah. And I see that you have the, t the hot dog gumbo right there. We're taking a look at that. Tell us about that. The gumbo is, uh, Christina is uh, one of our cooks and cashiers. She's, uh -huh. she's from Louisiana and uh -huh. she comes in and she makes our gumbo when the weather gets chilly. But we use our smoked andouille sausage mm. that, uh, that, we, that we cook and smoke in the morning. We uh -huh. use that and she, she does her little roux and Love it. she does her little thing. And then we do our gumbo and we serve that with the andouille, mm -hmm. with a grilled onion, spicy brown mustard, and a little bit of uh, sweet barbecue sauce. Man, and Philip hasn't stopped moving over here. Is no. this what it's like every day? What Phil, it's Phil moves like this all the all time. The Phil time. is awesome. He is um, creating masterpieces. Yeah. He's not just slapping a dog on a bun. Phil runs the smokers, uh, and he runs the grill, and most of, pretty much mostly runs the kitchen, so yeah. Man, and I'm telling you, let me yeah. tell you something. You have missed it if you're not in the studio audience, because they're all going to get a taste of this, and this is smelling so good. I got to ask you, what do you think you want people to know the experience they'll have when they come to Steve's Hot Dog on the Grill? It's a there great, was a picture right there. What are they going to experience? It's a great vibe in there. It's in, it's, you know, it's in a historic district that's mm -hmm. known for the food. So you mm -hmm. come down there, the food's going to be great. Um, we, we, like I said, we hickory smoke all of our food. Wow. All of our sausages and meats come fresh from either the hill or the, or the area. Mm -hmm. Our buns are baked fresh every morning. Um, we prep every morning, so nothing... Nothing is ever not fresh in yes. our shop, so everything is all fresh. And we just put a lot of work into bringing this food to you. You so. do, and love. It's not your regular dog, folks, I'm telling yeah. you. So now you have a couple of unique names, the Achihuahua dog. The Achihuahua, that Achihuahua. is with our, uh, we use that with our smoked chorizo sausage. Okay. And so we put avocado, we put a uh, very spicy chipotle onion on it. Woohoo! And uh, we put a little bit of spicy brown mustard, uh -huh. a little sweet relish. Wow and uh, a little sriracha for you. I like the way you remember it all. I gotta ask about the Hawaii Five-O <laughs> dog when we come back, but we gotta get ready okay. to go to a break right now. I'm gonna eat this while we're on break, but this, look at that, look at, Philip is just getting down over watch, here. In this watch kitchen. that. Woo! <laughs> the aroma, the yes. aroma. I'm telling you, Steve's <laughs> Pet Dog at STL.com. Make sure you check them out and make sure you go buy some of these delicious food. It's so delicious. Meanwhile, we're gonna go to a quick break, but don't go away, because when you come back, we have NBA skills trainer, Drew Hanlon in the house. And more hot dogs. <laughs> Throw away money on wasted electricity. You're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. this hard, graduating can be even harder. But you can help Jose and the students in your community make it through by visiting boostup.org. affected by famine, war, and drought in the Horn of Africa. Make a simple text donation of $10. But do more than donate. Forward the facts.
keep innocent things from triggering an asthma attack. Please make the monsters go away. Learn how to stop their asthma attacks at noattacks.org. by Kathy Wilson. She is the event coordinator uh, for Dashing, Dashing for Compassion. You're with the Hospice of Southern Illinois. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us here uh, in the Den. Thank you for having us today. So your um, Dashing for Compassion is, this is the second year that yes. you have coming up? Yes. To, uh, November is National Hospice Month. So to bring community awareness about hospice and to fundraise for Hospice of Southern Illinois. This is our second annual Dashing for Compassion. It's a 5K run walk. And this is, will be our first year. We're adding an element of the one mile walk, uh, Magnum Smile, which is a walk for uh, dogs and their humans. Uh, to bring some attention to Magnum, my friend, uh, from our community hospice home in Edwardsville and his handler, Carol, who give therapy to our hospice patients and their families. Okay, let's let's take a look at uh, Magnum. He's one of our. Well, you probably saw him earlier in our studio audience, and he's. Tell us about him. Uh, he is a Labradoodle from Champ. They're an organization who trains service dogs, but he is the only one of his kind because of the special training he's received to give therapy and uh, love to to our hospice patients. Um, there's a lot of things that, uh, as terminal illness brings, that uh, he can all the loving and things that you can't do to a, a service dog that when you see him out in, in the public, oh, you can't go love pictures. on him, we can do that. Oh, he's he's adorable. Aww. And uh, Carol and Magnum bring a lot of love and care to our patients and their families and to the community. So he's just a well-mannered, well-tempered dog. Is awesome. that with the breed or is this just Magnum? Uh, both. <laughs> Mostly Magnum. He is kind of a, a, a star Gazer, you know, everybody, he walks into the room and everybody wants to love and pet on him. He's just a very uh, happy-go-lucky animal. Uh, but the breed of the retrievers and the poodle are very good family-oriented dogs. Yeah. So he's a great blend for uh, hospice uh, care in, the, in general. Yeah. Uh, so what we do is just focus on uh, enhancing the quality of life for terminally ill patients and their families going through all of those stages. So once a family gets a terminal diagnosis, regardless of its uh, three days or three years, they can. Uh, there is no time limit. We can take care of their, them and their families and walk them through all the steps of, of preparing for that death and the grief thereafter. And what are some of the main uh, concerns or questions that you get from these families? Well, a lot of it is just what is hospice, uh, we, which is it's a special health care program for terminally ill patients. Um, and what do we do? It sounds like such a frightening thing. Um, but what we do is have a, t a team of uh, our, we work with their doctor. We have our own medical director. Uh, nurses, CNAs, we have volunteers that come and visit with the patient, as well as uh, a, a lot of other things, uh, bereavement counselors and social workers that work with the family. We walk them through all the processes from paperwork that needs to be done, powers of attorneys, and then caring for the patient to relieve them um, so that they have the most quality of life through their end of, uh, through their end of life experience. So that, that's what life is about, is about life and in, enjoying it so that we can bring joy to them. And uh, our hospice home in Edwardsville is a great uh, opportunity for folks to do that. It's a beautiful setting and 17 acres in Edwardsville. Yeah, uh, how, many people, how many people are, are there? Currently? We have a, a 16 bed facility okay. and, um, and you're welcome to come by and take a tour at any mm -hmm. time. The facility is open 24 seven and we love visitors. Now is Magnum always there? He's there quite a bit. Now, Okay. He doesn't live there. Uh, he stays with uh, uh, Carol, but uh, they go and visit a lot of the patients, and uh, not only at the hospice home, but uh, in nursing homes and uh, their family home and things like that. So. Okay. Well, it's good to have you here, Kathy, and great to have Magnum here as, as well, and his handler as well. We've got some information about the event. Again, November National House Hospice Month. Mm -hmm. And so let's show you that information right there. Hospice.org, that is the website that you can get more information on. That's the 5K Dashing for Compassion. So again, Kathy, thank you so much for being here. Oh, Best of luck you. with the event. All right, let's send it over to you, LJ.
We have heard some great music and we got some more because they got some moves like Jagger. Get ready to dance out loud with Dance Floor Riot. need to get closer. I am here with Mike Alexander. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having us. We're loving it. You guys are outstanding. Why don't you introduce us to the rest of the band? Well, this is uh, Brandon, the other lead singer of the band. This is Eddie Halsey on guitar, Dan Strain on bass, Seth Donnelly back there on the drums, and Mr. Joseph Randall over here on keys. I mean, you guys are outstanding. You play some really, really great music tonight. You know, you got the moves like Jagger, you know, all kind of stuff. So how do you select the kind of music that you're going to play? You know, we, uh, we were big in the, in the band scene. Some of the members were in original bands, and a lot of us always wanted to do a cover band. A lot of the cover bands do the same type of music, a little bit of a twist on it. We decided to do what the DJs do in between every other band set and do the music that people enjoy to dance to. Yeah, because I, I like everything that you've played so far. You guys don't just play. You do other things. You're community-minded. You have something, a scholarship that you're doing. Tell us a little bit about that. We do. We have the Dance Floor Riot Performing Arts Scholarship. Uh, we, we take different restaurants in the community, like Steve's Hot Dogs on the Hills. We create a menu item there, 
and the proceeds from that are donated to the scholarship, which we then donate to a choir student and a band student at a randomly selected school every year um, and award that scholarship to those children. That is phenomenal. So it's music, education, the whole nine going on. Absolutely, yep. So we can catch you guys. You got a lot of upcoming events going on. Tell us about some of those events that you have coming up. We do have a lot. Uh, I think the one that we're most uh, excited about coming up is the Zombie Survival Dash. That's next Saturday. We play from 1 to 3. Uh, you can come out, I think, to, uh, tomorrow is actually the last day you can register. Um, and you can run the 5K, uh, or you can do the body bag dragging. You can do the grenade tossing, the zombie shooting. Um, it's all kind of stuff, that basically zombie theme. They chase you while you're doing your 5K. Uh, or I could just dance. You could just dance with <laughs> us. Yeah, you can hang with us. So if I want to know more information about you guys, I want to follow you and do all those wonderful things, how can I do that? We're very social media connected. We're on uh, dancefloorriot.com is our website. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, MySpace. Uh, believe it or not, it still exists. Uh, we're all over the place. If it's out there, we're on it. Well, all right. You guys are awesome. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Can't wait to hear some more of that great music. Give it up. Give it up. Thank you. So let's check out what Cassandra and Melanie are doing over there on that main stage. Cassandra and Melanie. Thank you, LJ. That was powerful. Great job, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. Our next guest is also powerful. He's a tra trainer and consultant for multiple NBA and elite collegiate basketball players. That's right. He works with both coaches and players to help them reach their maximum basketball potential. Absolutely. Please help us welcome the CEO of Pure Sweat Basketball, Mr. Drew Hanlon. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Now, Melanie, I've known Drew since he was 13 years old. Aww. So I'm like a proud mama. You, you, have you sound like it. You sound like I it. I am. Drew, now, when you, when I think about the fact that you are doing so well in business, it makes me remember when you were younger and, and even now your dad owning a, a, his own business. How much do you think that influenced you in terms of thinking, giving you the courage to go out on your own? Well, you know, one thing, my dad worked his butt off, and so obviously I saw that hard work uh, pay off for him. And and one thing he always told me was try to make money using your brain mm -hmm. and, and instead of your body because he was just kind of fatigued at night and stuff like that. So for me, I always had that business uh, mindset going into it and uh, really it was just all about finding something that I love doing and, and mm -hmm. I found that just through uh, kind of hard work and, and now that I have it, I'm just rolling and fortunate enough to do what I do for a living. That's wonderful. So you, do you use your brain and body or is it more <laughs> of a brain a effort? Uh, it's definitely the consulting side is obviously a lot of, uh, you know, strategic stuff on the basketball court, but also just the business mindset. You know, you have to be social media savvy. You have to make good business decisions. And uh, I've definitely had my flaws, you know, coming up being young and stuff like that. But I've had a great team that supported me and mentored me. And uh, I've been fortunate to put it in a good position now. Surround yourself with good people. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it pays off. And, and Drew, actually, you started out as an author. You wrote your first book. Was it like basketball and skills in the driveway? Tell us about it. Yeah, my first book was actually called Driveway Dedication. Mm -hmm. It was something I wrote my junior year and senior year of high school. Amazing. So it was something that, you know, it started out basically, um, I was a high school basketball player and people were, you know, questioning, you know, what do you do in your off-season program? Um, and I, I used to get to the gym at 5.15 every morning. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, what goes into those workouts? And so I compiled all the drills into a book, uh, added teaching points, and, and basically, you know, self-published it, used Kinko's, and, and did it low budget, but it was something that ended up selling around town, and, and it started what now is a, a full-time business venture that's uh, let me travel all over the world. You don't sound like any high schooler I know. I, know. <laughs> I mean, at the gym at 515, you wrote a I book know. in high school. I mean, that's just crazy. I know. But, but in a good way. Have, how um, young were you when you started playing basketball? Um, you know, just like everybody else, I had a ball in my hands ever since I was little. But, uh, you know, I really started focusing on the training side, sixth grade. Um, I went to Missouri basketball camp, and they showed us some cool, like, two-ball dribbling drills, and I fell in love with those. And at the time, I looked up, and you know, to the Missouri basketball players, my dad being a Missouri alum. And so, uh, you know, I started doing that, and, and then ever since then, it just... I always had a drive to succeed in whatever it is. You know, mm -hmm. if I, I'm not very good at golf, so that's not my you know, favorite sport to do. <laughs> and, and so basketball is something that I found uh, to have success in, and I just continue to work hard at it. And Drew, when you were here at Webster Groves, you won the um, state championship, and then you went on to play with Belmont University on a full scholarship. So you're a great basketball player in your own right. What made you decide, you know, I could go forward and play professionally at some level, 
or I could start a business and help others. How did you make that decision? You know, it was something actually I thought about in high school. I knew that, you know, being a 5'11 guy that didn't have, you know, wasn't blessed with tons of athletic ability, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I knew that there was going to be opportunities for me to play overseas and do that, but it'd be more like I, I was chasing something. And so for me, mm. you know, I chose Belmont University. They had an entrepreneurship program that was great. I knew that would prepare me for the future. And, and when I was choosing a school, and I tell all my young high school guys that I kind of mentor the same thing, I was trying to pick a school that would set me up for four years, not just have a fun four years. And mm. so Belmont was a school like that. Um, it also gave me a chance to play in two NCAA tournament appearances. So really it was in high school I made the decision, you know, hey, there's, the ball's going to stop bouncing at some point. I'm going to need something else after basketball. And, and again, my passion just took me to where I'm at today. I would have That's naturally awesome. thought that maybe coaching would have been mm -hmm. something that you would have considered. Was it ever? Yeah, coaching is still something that I'm considering. Um, yeah, I've got a couple um, NBA teams that have shown me interest in, in doing their player development and skill development, which would be assist, assistant coach position. But for me, I'm just uh, so loyal to my clients. You know, Even if it's a better position for me, um, I would never want to leave those, those guys that have been there from the get-go and, and help me get to where I'm at. And so for me, it's, uh, you know, I'd like to continue helping them um, reach their dreams. And then after that, then I'll pursue my own. And Melanie, we can see some of the clients that Drew's worked with on the screen here. And, and Drew works with my oldest son, Scott, <coughs> who's been on the show a couple of times, who plays for the University of Washington. Actually, they played together when they were younger. And I know one thing that Scott always says, Drew, is when he comes home and he has the opportunity to work out with you, he just really, really enjoys it. He talks about uh, it to other people. He recommends you to other people. And he says that he likes the fact that it's tailor-made, even though he's playing at a high level college, you know, so they're getting lots of uh, opportunities to work out with great people and even NBA players come back. What you do is you specialize it. You actually pay attention to your players. You critique them. You find out what their strengths and weaknesses are. And then you put that into it. I mean, that's amazing. Is that something you came up with on your own? That's definitely. That's kind of how I found my niche. You know, it, it's kind of like in the business world and in, in, in business classes, they always tell you you have to find, you know, kind of a way to separate yourself. And, and mine was through video breakdown. So if I if I worked like with a guy like Scott, you know, even though he's one of my good friends and a good buddy and a teammate, you know, from high school, I still would watch his clips, find where he's weak, where he's strong, and try to enhance his strengths and then also develop his weaknesses so that other teams and scouting reports can't take advantage of that. And so for me, it's, uh, you know, everybody, you don't, everybody's not the same player. And so you have to customize that so that they can use their athletic ability and ultimately become the best player that they can be instead of trying to imi imitate somebody else mm -hmm. and, and just try to be an overall good player. Yeah, just bring out the best that they have inside of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, tell me about some of your clients. Um, I know we were just showing some pictures, but... Yeah, so the clientele ranges from uh, all over the place. Uh, David Lee, who is an NBA All-Star, he's probably the, the most notable client. He's a, a guy that averaged 20 points and 10 rebounds in the NBA last year. Um, Bradley Beal just got selected third in the NBA draft. Um, John Jenkins was also a first-round pick. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to work with four um, first-round picks this year, and then um, also, a lot of people know guys like John Wall, who I've been fortunate to help with, and, and, and I've worked with a lot of guys just on weekend trips and stuff like that, but uh, the guys I named are the guys that I work with consistently, and, and those are guys that I consider almost like the Pure Sweat family, you know? All right, and we hope to add Scott Suggs to that list of NBA players, hopefully here real soon, real <laughs> no doubt. soon. Drew, uh, it's fabulous. I've been wanting to have you on the show for a long time. So proud of you. I just want to give you a shout out and say you know, he's really, really good at what he does. And I mean, next thing I know, you'll be talking on uh, Dave Letterman or Katie <laughs> or something. So I'm glad we got you right now. Best of luck to you. Absolutely. Drew, thank you so much for coming on the thank show. Thank you guys for having me. As a matter of fact, we're going to have you join us in the kitchen right now. You want to do that? And Melanie, we're going to toss over to LJ. He can follow us in the kitchen. How about yeah, that? We'll All that. right. Well, while we're going over to the kitchen with Drew, we're going to see what LJ's doing because I believe she's trying to find out what's in the loop. LJ? Ooh. For all my people in the loo that are out of the loop, brace yourself, because I am about to hook you up. I am going to improve your dating life through all of the restaurants that are some of my favorites in St. Louis. So if you want a great first date, why don't you check out the Sydney Street Cafe? Sydney Street Cafe is located at 2000 Sydney Street in St. Louis, Missouri. Wonderful, wonderful place for the first date to see if you really like the person and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money. And then after you leave there, you should check out Almonds and Clayton. The address is 8127 Maryland Avenue, wonderful sexy place with great entrees and a lot of ambiance going on over there so that's a great second date and then if things are really steaming up and it's really getting hot check out hacienda mexican restaurant at 9748 manchester 
best enchiladas I've ever had in my life. Wonderful, wonderful place to go. And then if you're really getting serious and it's really getting sexy, check them out at Ben Deset at 2017 Shoto in St. Louis, Missouri. You better make some reservations. It gets really crowded really, really quickly. And some of the best decadent desserts I have ever had in my life. And then if you really think you're ready to settle down, why don't you check out the fountains on Locust? 3037 Locust Boulevard, wonderful place to say, you know what, I think I like you. So all of my people that are out of the loop, you have been officially hooked up. Check it out, all these great restaurants. Let's see what Melly and Cassandra are doing over there in the kitchen. I've got to get over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you come over here in a few minutes. What, are we talking about food? Are we looking at food? We're definitely smelling food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got Phil and Steve here from Steve's Hot Dogs, and it smells amazing. Yes. Are you going to start eating without me? Well, I, I'm trying not to, <laughs> but you know what? I have the veggie dog that I've been talking that about all night long. You know, and, and remember, it, it was on television. Steve said he was giving me one to go. I'm just saying. I get my hot plate. I'm just saying. So now we're Wrapping it all up, obviously, Phil and Steve, what is your favorite part about having your own hot dog business, Steve? I get to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Sample the products. Absolutely. What's your favorite? Part. I'm going to eat this Chicago dog. This, this is one of my favorites. Oh, this, yes. Uh, of course. But wait, wait. The Hawaii oh, Five-O oh. dog. You didn't tell me about oh, that yet. Oh, I didn't tell you about the no. Hawaii Five-O dog. The Hawaii Five-O's, we take uh, fresh pineapple slices. We nestle them right inside the uh, bun there, whatever, mm -hmm. and we put uh, bacon on top. Grilled onion and a little bit of sweet barbecue sauce. Wow. Yeah. How do you, do you come you up with onions these? a lot? I can see that. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's like the perfect uh, blend, you know, between sweet and salty. You know, mm -hmm. so you get the little sweet from the pineapple and the little uh, salty from the bacon. Mm -hmm. And I like the story you told me, Steve, about that you could have just gotten a regular veggie dog from a store or something, but it, it right. wasn't quality enough for you. So tell us what you did. Yeah, we. We really, really wanted to have a, like a good veggie dog. We looked, we looked, we looked. We couldn't find anything that, uh, that we liked in the stores and stuff like that. So we said, so let's make one. So we took uh, tofu. We knew we wanted to like it with that. We knew we wanted fresh veggies. And uh, Joe, another guy who works there, he, he came up with the idea of actually rolling them up mm -hmm. in the uh, spring, spring raw, spring mm -hmm. paper, and we put it in the bun. And then we just started just loading it up with everything fresh we had. Oh, man. that's so, awesome. Yeah. It is so good and vegan good. friendly. It smells fresh. When the spring roll, what is spring roll made out of, rice? It's uh, rice paper. Oh, it's rice paper. Yeah. I love it. Well, LJ, yeah. you got to get on over here and get some of this, girl. Oh, this is good. <laughs> you finally made it. I guess it's time for us to All thank right. him, huh? Yeah. Thank All you right. so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> and Phil, you guys yes. uh, really laid out a spread for us. I'm sure our audience members can't wait to eat. I Sample know. That. And thank you, Drew, for coming on. PureSweatBasketball.com. Don't forget to check him out. And of course, Steve's Hot Dogs, STL.com is where you can go online right. and check out Steve and go down and try the food. It's delicious. Thank you so much for our audience that was here and you at home viewers. We know you know we love you all. And thank you to our sponsor, Sam's Club. You've been with us for 10 years. We really appreciate you. And all of our great sponsors, thanks so much. And last but certainly not least, we want to give a shout out to the band Dance Floor Ride. Take it away. We party rock. Yeah. Shake that. Hope it down. Yo, I'm running.